بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بارہ ربیع الاول کا دن حضور سے ربیع الاول از دیٹ ڈے جب دنیا میں وین ان دی ورلڈ وہ نور آیا دیٹ لائٹ کیم وچ سراج منیر کا اللہ المائٹی ہیز مینشنڈ ایز سراج منیر اے ویری بریلینٹ سن وچ which uh, illuminated uh, spiritually the whole world and uh, that was destined to do that and he did and which uh, which had to establish the domain of Allah Almighty and he did and uh, the people who were spiritually dead for thousands of years he had to give the spiritual life to them and he did and uh, and the one who was destined to give the world the peace and harmony and he did and uh, who was told by allah almighty that wa mar salla ka illa rahmatan lil alamin that we have not sent you uh, but as an embodiment of mercy for the whole of mankind who was not mercy for only men uh, mankind but uh, for the animals and the birds for everything he was mercy and he was not mercy only for muslims but he was a blessing and mercy for even the non muslims and he is like that and whose teaching is till the eternity is a source of mercy for all times for all people and regarding him allah almighty has addressed uh, to the his believers that in the person of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a role model excellent example for you to follow as allah almighty says laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا that certainly for you in the person of the holy prophet there is a good model for all those people who who hope to meet allah and the day of judgment and he remembers allah almighty very much so therefore huzur says that uh, to act upon this uh, noble example without that the muslims cannot be called real muslims our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may peace and blessings of allah be upon him for um, for us he st- set up the standards of the unity of allah and uh, m- m- examples of worship and of the good morals and also how to discharge the duties towards uh, uh, people he set the example but it's very sad that nowadays the the majority of the muslims today they do claim to have the love of allah love of the prophet but the their action their uh, compliance is just the opposite and uh, just opposite to the teaching which was given by your master the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to which he acted upon he came as mercy for the whole of mankind and these people uh, who claim to have the love of uh, the prophet nowadays on this day of uh, 12 rabiul lawal with great uh, excitement they are they are celebrating it so and despite the fact that they make the promise that oh prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we following your example noble example we are going to spread mercy uh, everywhere in the majority of the countries today there is a law a case of a, a lack of law and order absence of law, law and order and today on this day of happiness uh, from the action of every muslim this should be demonstrated that uh, the prophet who whom we are following he is the king 
ruler and the emperor of the mercy and for mankind he is mercy for the whole of mankind and he has set up the high ex- models of worship and he is uh, having the highest uh, uh, status in law and in in the in the character and we by the grace of allah are following his example so therefore so therefore on this very day very auspicious day in the happiness of the birth of the holy prophet the love and affection and therefore we will be spreading the love and affection to the people because uh, this is what our prophet the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has advised his followers and this is what he expected from all of us and this is what he taught he gave the message and teaching to the people but just opposed to that one in the muslim countries there is a condition of lawlessness and disorder rather in the non muslim countries because of uh, these muslims they are very much terrified in pakistan because of this fear that uh, if the fire of uh, lawlessness and disorder if uh, goes from one place to another in some cities they have stopped the service of the mobile phone and uh, high uh, very strong contingent of police have been appointed everywhere is this is the way to celebrate the happiness of this uh, noble prophet that every a uh, nice uh, sincere person is uh, in fear and in order to enforce the law for the law and order they have got separate reservation about that in the name of our beloved master the holy master sallallahu alaihi wasallam against the ahmadis they are speaking foul languages and swearing and using bad language this is their common day thing and today there is more excitement uh, on this day in the happiness of this day in their thinking uh, by doing so these people they are in a way they think that we are exalting the status of the holy prophet and a few days ago in several cities of uh, the pakistan of pakistan there was this, uh, this sitting and uh, the demonstration in the various cities that uh, disturbed all the people and the the daily life was very much disturbed people people could not go to hospital the schools were closed rather the shops and the markets they were closed uh, nobody in whose house there is uh, there was no provision of food for the children he could not uh, purchase and he could not go out and purchase the provision of food and the loss of billions of people was suffered by the nation and all these things these uh, so called ulama it is because of the slogan of these people that they love the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that prophet who is mercy for the whole of mankind who has given us the teaching that the rights of the way should be given to the people he said that in markets uh, do not uh, create a hue and cry there a noise and he said that uh, on uh, don't sit in the paths where the people have to walk and when this uh, companion said that uh, we are very compelled to sit because in those days the there were no such uh, offices there or the business centers where the financial matter could be settled so sitting in the market and uh, on the way they had to decide these things the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he heard this uh, statement of the companions he replied that then you discharge the rights of the path then asked men asked that what are the rights of the path and the passage he said that you lower your eyes and avoid giving any harm to any people this is the right of the path and reply to the greeting of peace because this is the right of the path and advise good things because this is the uh, right of the path because this is also the like that and give the rights to the people but these people in the name of this um, sanctity of the prophethood they are putting the people to hardship and despite that these people 
in their own understanding they are the uh, whole custodian of religion and according to their standards uh, whomsoever they like they can declare him as non believer and whomsoever they like they can make him the mumin and the believer so anyway these are their actions and uh, and these uh, things are all for the uh, attainment of their own selfish motives the teaching of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the noble example of the holy prophet these things do not relate to that remotely even and whatever these people may be doing but we ahmadis it is our duty that uh, that uh, we should look at every aspect of the noble example of the holy prophet and we must follow we should do our best to follow that with all our efforts and capabilities we have to follow that today at this time with reference to the noble example of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am going to relate some aspect of his life the love that he had with the holy prophet with allah almighty the holy prophet had with allah almighty the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasallam says in one place that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was extremely in love of one being and then he caught that thing which nobody ever had caught in the world he was uh, he was so much in, intense in love so much in, in so much in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has become a very fond and love in of allah almighty and uh, regarding this love and affection of the holy prophet with allah almighty the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasallam further says that when these verses were revealed that uh, the idolaters they are uh, filthy and they are worst of the creation and they are fool, uh, foolish people and they are the progeny of satan and uh, and their end is going to be in hell so then abu Ta- talib uh, he t- sent for the holy prophet and told him that oh my uh, son and now the whole nation have been very much excited by your statement and it's very close that they might kill you and also along with you they also might kill me so you have uh, intelligent people you have told them as foolish and the uh, they are uh, and uh, in, you have declared that these people are the fodder for the hell and you have declared them as uh, filthy people and the progeny of satan and impure so in the interest of welfare i say to you that you hold your tongue and you stop these uh, abuses which you give otherwise i won't be able to contain the aggression of uh, my people and this is what his uncle said to him the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasallam the the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in reply he said that oh my uncle this is not abuse this is not foul language this is what i am telling is the statement of the real fact and on right time i have mentioned and this is the task for which i have been appointed and if uh, i am going to die in this way then i will accept that very happily my life is dedicated to this task because of the fear of death i cannot stop from expressing the truth but if my uncle if you are considering your weakness uh, and uh, you can just uh, leave my custody by god i do not uh, i am not in need of your help i will never desist from conveying the message of allah but the commandments of allah almighty they are dear to me than my life and if i am killed in my way so then i wish that i should be given life again and again and again i offer my life this is not an occasion of fear but i enjoy this thing and i am happy it the the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was delivering the speech and on the face was glaring with the truth and happiness and when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam concluded his speech so then looking at the light of the truth then uh, talib said that uh, from this condition i was totally away unaware before that so you are totally a different person and so you continue doing whatever you 
uh, whatever you like your job you continue to do that and as long as i am living i will support you so nowadays the ahmadis are being alleged that mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani al islam because of believing in him these people are non believers the ahmadis this incident which i have just narrated this we study in the books of history and listen many time but uh, this a uh, uh, devotion and with the heartfelt passion the promised messiah alayhi salatu wasalam has mentioned that one that is very clear to indicate his his intense love with the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, based on that uh, uh, one can see the ways to the love of allah almighty which one can create and uh, this is what uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has shown us that in the love of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, the promised messiah further says uh, describing the love of uh, of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to allah i always wonder that this arabic prophet whose name is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam thousands upon thousands of uh, salutation be upon him what a high status he had it is impossible to find out his high status to ascertain that and to discern that and we cannot understand the spiritual power that he be- had <coughs> but it's very sorry sorry that the people have not recognized him as it should have been and that unity of allah which had disappeared from the world he is the stalwart who brought it back and established it and he loved allah almighty to the highest point and to the highest point in the a love of mankind he w- he became very uh, dedicated to that and these are the two things the love of allah and the love of the mankind he completely dedicated and committed himself to this so therefore that allah who knew the secret of his heart and uh, he, he was given uh, on all the prophets and all the noble people he was given the preference over all of them and all his desires were given to him during his life he is the fountain head of all the blessings and uh, the one who without admitting the excellence of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he claims something he is not a human being he is the progeny of satan because all the all the keys of the excellence were given to the holy prophet and all the treasure of the uh, knowledge of allah almighty was given and the one who does not find through him he is the one who is empty handed and we will be denying this blessing of allah almighty if we do not declare that the true concept of the unity of allah almighty we found through this prophet and the uh, living god was recognized by his eyes through the prophet and we have li- found this light through him and uh, the way we see the allah almighty that we have been able to learn and to uh, get through this prophet and uh, this uh, blessing comes to us like the rays of the sun and we can only be illuminated as far as we are in front of it so if we follow the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can really have the true perception of the unity of allah almighty as long as we follow him and by acting upon his noble example we can reach to god <coughs> and uh, this is actually the foundation of the whole claim of the promised messiah alayhi salatu wasalam what was the high standards of the worship of allah almighty the hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha uh, regarding the in the uh, situation of his tahajjud prayer the early morning prayer he says she says that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his early morning prayer he did not uh, uh, offer more than 11 rakats in the prayer in the morning prayer but they were so long and so beautiful that uh, and the beauty of these uh, uh, prayer and the length of that do not ask me the question the words are uh, unable to describe that condition in one narration it is mentioned that a companion saw when in this uh, solitude he was offering the prayer one companion saw him he said that because of the intensity of the crying and weeping one could heard from his uh, chest uh, the voice just as the grinding of the grinding mill or uh, it is the voice uh, or the sound when the boil, uh, water is being boiled in the kettle 
and it it is it is mentioned that sometime while standing in the prayer his feet would swell and would uh, be broken uh, uh, will be cut from here and there and once i said the hazrat aisha said that o prophet of allah o prophet of allah why do you put yourself into so much hardship that while allah almighty has forgiven all your sins the previous one and the future one the reply of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam afala uhibbu an akuna abdan shukura that uh, should i not like that uh, should i not not love that i should become a grateful servant of allah almighty the, the these high standards of the worship of allah almighty what revolution was brought about in the companions regarding that the promise messiah alayhi salatu wasalam says that i say with full with full force that however strong enemy it may be whether christian or arya when they would see on these examples of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those conditions which were before that and then he will see at the change which was brought about because of his teaching then he would have no way except to declare openly that uh, this was uh, this was because of the holy prophet and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi almighty has mentioned the condition of the previous condition of these people the people of the arab and the previous life and the previous condition is described like this yaquluna tamun yaquluna kama taqulu lanam that they that these people they eat just like the animal seat their condition is just like the beasts and this was the condition while they were disbelievers but when they the pure changes was brought about by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then their condition was yabituna li rabbihim sujadam that they that means that in the worship of allah almighty they they spend the whole night standing and in prostration so that change Uh, which was brought about by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in these beastly like people the promise messiah alaihi salatu wasallam says that that ch- 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 change which he brought about in the beastly people of these people and from the ditch he took it took them out and brought about the revolution looking at the whole transformation one a person uh, is cannot help uh, except crying that what a beautiful revolution he brought about he says that no history of the world in no nation of the world you cannot find any parallel of that this is not a story these are the hard facts the truth of that the people and the whole world has uh, admitted that so so this community who has been linked with these people of the uh, earlier time their responsibility is also there that Azur is referring to the Ahmadiyya community that as the companions raised the standard of worship we should also stand raise the standard of our worship and we should not be completely lost in the world the auxiliary organization and the jamaat administration they give the report that uh, so much percentage of the people have become regular in prayer 40 people 50 people 60% so unless we are able to create 100% worshipers we should not uh, feel at rest and not only the administration but every person individually should uh, m- make the scrutiny that in what condition i am where do i stand and then in the truth and uh, the honesty what was his uh, status the strongest enemy of the holy prophet nazar bin haris one of them the witness he gave is listen to that once the leaders of the uh, quraish was there abu jahal and nazar bin haris was also there regarding the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when somebody said that he should be uh, the word should be spread that he is a magician he is a f- liar nazar bin haris stood up and he said that o oh, people of quraish you, you have uh, come to such a point where you cannot do anything to confront that situation and he said that the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a young boy among you and he was most beloved of all of you he was the most truthful person 
he was the most honest person among you now when you have seen that he is growing in age that there were some gray hair uh, on his uh, temples so and uh, the message that he has brought then now you are saying that he is a magician he does not have anything of magic we have seen the magicians he said that he is just a, a sorcerer and but we uh, we have seen these people he is not like one of them you said that he is a poet we know all the uh, various branches of uh, poetry but he is not a poet you said that he is a lunatic but there is no aspect no indication of uh, uh, this thing is there madness is there so you are confronting a very huge situation very big situation and then abu jahal regarding the truthfulness of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he could not deny that he always uh, said the truth he said that i don't declare you as a, a, a false person but the teaching that you have brought that is wrong because you are speaking ill of against our statue, statues and idols so abu sufyan also said the same thing uh, that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never told any lie and he always advises the people to tell the truth to speak the truth so the strongest enemies they could not uh, declare him to be a false man and uh, this is a great argument and uh, for his being truthful and the jewish uh, scholar looking at his face when he said that this face could not be the face of a liar so therefore his teaching and the high standard of his truthfulness are such that uh, which can bring the non muslims closer to islam and this uh, falsehood deception uh, and all these things this can increase the people in the in the enmity of islam but does not cannot bring them closer to islam these worldly things and the establishment of their own governments and uh, the so called uh, ulama they are whatever they are speaking from the pulpit these are the things which cannot establish the superiority of islam so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam following into in his example it is the responsibility of ahmadis that they should exalt and raise the standards of their truthfulness so that uh, in the spread of the teaching of islam there should be a uh, ease for them it is very essential for tabligh and preaching that uh, we act upon that if you know there is no truth in our action then they will consider our preaching as false the being of allah almighty is a truth the religion of islam is the truth so to spread this truth and to spread it through truth that is our responsibility today hazrat masih maud alaihi salatu wasalam says that a wise person has to admit that just before islam all the religions got corrupted and they had left the spirituality so then our prophet the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came to declare the truthfulness he was a reformer for that uh, uh, that thing and he brought the truth of islam and uh, and there is no one who is uh, joining in this honor with him that he found the whole world into darkness and then through his light that darkness was converted into brightness and light and he did not die until he was uh, Um, he did not die until he made these idolaters as the worshipper of one god and uh, not only this much but these people they attained the high status of morality and uh, in the truthfulness and the certainty uh, these examples were there the examples of which is not to be found in any part of the world this success and the uh, success to that extent was not given to any prophet except the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is a great argument for the truth of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was raised in such a time uh, that when he came when the whole world was in complete darkness and naturally it was in need of a reformer and then he passed away from this world when thousands upon thousands of people they have left the idol worship and they had adopted the path of uh, the oneness of allah and so this was destined for him that he also reformed the people who were beastly people before that he told them 
gave them the manners of human beings. In other words, that he converted these uh, uh, animals to men and then the men he converted to educated people. And then from educated people they made them the people who knew God Almighty, who recognized God and their link was established with the true God. So if somebody has to, wants to be declared a true believer and one has to become one uh, to have a link with Allah Almighty, so then it is need is there to elevate the standard of a, a link with God Almighty. And if anybody can do today, they are the Ahmadis who can do it. Because they have made the promise with the Imam of the age that they are going to give preference to religion over the world. And this should not be simply the promise, but uh, each and every action of the Ahmadi should be a witness to this, the truth of this uh, promise. And only then the truth of this promise will be become manifest. One great uh, uh, noble uh, example of um, moral was the modesty and uh, modesty and humbleness. And in this aspect as well, the example of the Holy Prophet was going to all the heights and uh, mentioning his uh, humbleness and humility. Hadrat Aisha says that it never happened that from among the, uh, from the companions that anybody would have called upon him from his relatives and he would not have responded positively to him. Hadrat Aisha says, that that is that is why in the holy quran allah almighty says inna ka la ala khuluqin azim that uh, certainly you are you have been appointed and you have been put into high state of uh, uh, good morals and uh, in in the sayings it is mentioned that whenever he turned to someone he would turn uh, fully and his eyes were always lowered and as if uh, as if he is looking at the earth more than uh, other things and he used he was always first to say salam to other people and he said that i am the leader of the whole of the mankind but i don't boast for that and i will be the first who will be doing the intercession for the people and i will be the first one whose intercession is going to be accepted but there is no matter of pride in that and the the standard of peace will be in my hand on the day of judgment but this is not any matter of boasting and this is the height of modesty which is example from these examples which is clear and the promise Messiah says that simply by by making tall claims and boasting one cannot get really the truth and one should be modest look the Holy Prophet who was the highest of everyone and he was deserving all the nobility and one example of his modesty is mentioned in the Holy Quran. It is written there that uh, it is written that a blind person he he used to come and study the Quran from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu One day the ch chiefs and the elders of the uh, Meccan people Meccans they say he was busy in, in talking to them, and he was busy. And there it took some time, and the and, a blind person came and uh, he went back because uh, uh, and uh, this was a small apparently a small thing but the holy prophet sallam he went to his house and uh, he was brought back and he spread his sheet and made him sit on that so the fact of the matter is the promised messiah says that those people have the greatness in their heart then they definitely have to become very modest and humble because uh, they are always in fear of the uh, this quality of Allah Almighty. And as Allah Almighty is appreciating the small virtues, and if he becomes angry from um, from something, then he can just finish away all the people in a second. So the, uh, these things should be remembered and act upon that, and always uh, keep these things in your mind. And another, the the subject of his noble character is very vast it it cannot end at any time and all his actions are ex model and example for us because he is the greatest teacher and he is the teacher of the morality and even if somebody uh, is there uh, he was not of good moral but he always treated him very nicely Hadrat Aisha says that a person uh, 
he sought the permission to come to the Holy Prophet sallam. The Holy Prophet sallam looked at him and he said that uh, this person in his family is uh, not a good person. He does not treat his uh, family in a nice way. And he is uh, considered to be a very bad son of his family. When he came and uh, sat down, so then the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he showed uh, magnanimity and op- and he spoke to him in a very nice way, despite the fact that he was a, a bad brother and bad son, and so many uh, vices were there in in him. But he, he spoke to him very nicely when he, the person went away. So then the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the O Prophet of Allah. When you saw it, uh, saw him, that you mentioned this and this thing about him, and when during the conversation, uh, you showed uh, complete uh, magnanimity and uh, open-heartedness and uh, kindness. So he replied that, O oh, Aisha, when have you seen me using the foul language? Certainly, the worst person in the sight of Allah Almighty on the Day of Judgment would be that person who is... Uh, he says that uh, the first person in the sight of Allah Almighty on the Day of Judgment would be that, that uh, from his vices, the people are afraid of coming and meeting him. So when the Holy Prophet ﷺ was asked on one occasion, that, O Prophet of Allah, uh, how you can find out that whether you are doing good or bad? So the Holy Prophet ﷺ replied that when you feel, when you say your neighbor saying that you are good, so then believe it that your attitude is right. And when your neighbor says that you are bad, then your attitude and your example is bad. So then understand that you are bad and your attitude is not right. So so one should be mindful of one's morals and one has to keep them always good and right. And this is should be the way of all the Ahmadis today, all the problems in the Muslim world, the basic reason of that is that the standards of morals, they have got, uh, uh, they have been degraded. And uh, only they make, these people only make the claims. And uh, mentioning the noble example of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, the Promised Messiah says on one occasion that the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he was an example in everything good. And uh, look in his life, uh, you were how uh, was his kind treatment to the ladies? And uh, uh, he thinks that I that person is a very coward and very bad who stands against the ladies. Look at the study, the noble example of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu You will find that he was so good in his character, in his morals, that despite the fact that he was uh, greatly respectful, and if uh, a old lady would make him stand uh, and listen to her. The Holy Prophet ﷺ would stand there. He would go to the market and bring certain things uh, of the provision of the food. Once uh, uh, he bought something, a companion said that, give it to me. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, that the, uh, the, the thing, uh, if something belongs to a person, he should carry it himself. And this that uh, it should not be taken that he used to, used to bring the bundle of the firewood. Uh, not like that. But the main purpose from these example is that his uh, simplicity and modesty and humbleness is very clear from these example. And then, Hadrat Musiyah Maud says that uh, our Prophet, look at his example, that during the period of his uh, prophethood, 13 years, of that were uh, years of torture and uh, persecution and uh, the uh, the remaining part was a, a, a different and uh, there were so many other people there were Jewish and the idolaters and there were people who were worshipping the uh, fire and, uh, and uh, idol worshippers so all these people were there and uh, this was the way of their life and some of them, they did not do anything which was against the honor of their idols. And uh, they, they were so much uh, fond of drinking that five times in a day, instead of water they used to drink, alcoholic drinks. And uh, unlawful things were taken as uh, pure milk. And uh, uh, killing was just like cutting the vegetables. 
and every bad, in short all the bad things they were they had a good share of these people to reform that nation such a nation and to make them better and reformed people and to and uh, on top of that he was all alone and uh, sometime he had something to food sometime he had to go empty uh, on empty stomach and uh, every, and in in mecca the condition was very bad uh, sometime he has to go uh, for starvation and those people who uh, believed they were beaten up every day persecuted and they were helpless people uh, they were running around helplessly without any help and they were also uh, deported from their country and they were put into exile and then the second part of the life was that in the whole uh, peninsula of arabia uh, there was nobody who could uh, deny his truth and there was uh, such a um, high position was granted to him that if he had wanted at that time to kill all the people he could have killed if we, if he had been a selfish person so that was the time to take revenge from these uh, uh, vicious people but when he uh, won the uh, mecca he became the uh, uh, victor he simply said la tasrib alaykum al yawm no punishment and reprimand against you so those uh, two periods were there uh, the first and the other one and there was a, and it was a, very much a test for him in both the conditions and uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, all types of good morals it was a good test for him going through these two different conditions he was steadfast must he was pure and pious and modesty and humbleness and uh, 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 generosity and all these uh, uh, noble examples were there in his life and there was nothing left out so today if uh, the true celebration is to be made so the people have to follow the noble example of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where the status of worship should be high and one firm belief in allah almighty and the good morals their standard should be high if these things are not there so then if, if, uh, there is no difference between us and other people and those people who are divided the, and the temporary leader and uh, following the so called leaders they are creating difficulties for the people there would be no difference between them and us the promised messiah al islam uh, the uh, when we do the bath it requires that in everything we have to uh, keep the noble example of the holy prophet in our uh, in front of our eyes uh, may allah enable all of us that uh, and depend uh, describing the noble stand status of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the promised messiah says that that person who was the most perfect and he was the perfect man and he was a perfect prophet uh, he came with all the perfect blessings and uh, he because of the spiritual revolution he uh, showed the uh, uh, resurrection the spiritual resurrection of the in the world and uh, uh, this was there and uh, the whole world uh, he, it became alive by his coming that blessed prophet had the seal of the prophet who is the chief of all the righteous people who is the proud pride of all the prophets the muhammad mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there oh my allah you invoke such blessings and mercy upon this and uh, uh, this person if this uh, uh, wonderful prophet has not come in the world that the is smaller prophets who came yunus malaki and jahia and zakaria etc these people for the truth of all these people or these prophets there was no argument in our hand although they were all very close to allah almighty and they were the true prophets and it is the beneficence of this great prophet the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that all these people were recognized as a poor may allah invoke the blessings upon the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the last word is that all praise belongs to allah the lord of all the universe after the uh, prayers i will lead the one janaza prayer in absentia mukarma sister ghani sahiba uh, he is he, he was she was from america uh, in 20th of november at the age of 83 she passed away in allah wa inna ilaihi rajiun amir sahib america writes that in 1960 61 
At the age of 26, she accepted Islam and Ahmadiyyat and joined the community. And by profession, she was a teacher. In 75 and 76, she went to Jalsa in Rabwa. And she was very happy. And she used to narrate the uh, incidents there and after meeting and meet, meeting Hazrat Khalifa Tlumsi Salis. And uh, for 15 years, she was president of Sadr Lejn, uh, president of Lejnai Maullah. She worked very hard. And... Uh, and she brought the Lejna in America to a high standard. And uh, she was also president of Lejna in Philadelphia for a long time. She was regular in five daily prayers. She was very particular about the Hajjad prayer. And always uh, she worked for the progress of the community. She was It was the desire that the mosque in Philadelphia should be complete and she used to pray for that. And uh, I hope that uh, now the mosque will be completed very soon. Uh, respected Amir Sahib says, writes that uh, as uh, Sadr president, uh, she was uh, very cooperative to me and uh, and Sadr Sahib says that uh, uh, when she came to know about the cancer in the stomach, then uh, one week before the demise, I, I went there, went to meet her the doctor said that a few months but uh, the this uh, uh, I'm going to die within a week and uh, you lead the prayer in the Willingboro mosque and the arrangement of a grave in Philadelphia has been made she did not have any issue and uh, and there was no one Muslim but uh, she was uh, uh, her treatment to all his uh, um, uh, siblings was very nice the president of Lejna America writes that uh, she was brought up in Christian atmosphere, but uh, regarding the uh, the views about the death of Hazrat Isa on the cross, there were certain questions in his in her mind, and she was in search of such a religion uh, which could give her the satisfaction. And in this uh, investigation, uh, she studied Catholicism, Catholic uh, point of view, and uh, Hindu religion, and other religions she studied. She studied. And uh, she found good teachings in all religions, but no religion was able to give him the required information. And uh, and uh, in, during that period, a friend who had recently accepted Islam, in which it was written that Hazrat Isa did not die on the cross, he, he gave her the, that pamphlet. And when she read, she there were tears in his eyes. She said, I am again, alive again, once again. And uh, I, she felt that as if one part of my body was uh, has had, uh, was dead and now there is i have got the answers to all the questions and she purchased the books and studied those books and finally in in philadelphia she in, did the bath in there and uh, to the last uh, uh, breath she continued staying in philadelphia and she said that this is the uh, uh, this was the pamphlet and uh, uh, and this was written that Hazrat Isa did not die on the cross and that became the cause of my acceptance of Islam and uh, 54 years he spent in as Ahmadi and uh, he is, uh, set up a good example and standard of love and affection Hazrat Khalifa Musi Rabe during his uh, period for 15 years she was served as the president of Lejna America and uh, and she uh, served the cause of the Lejna dedicatedly and uh, she was also president of uh, African American desk she was the president of that and uh, his art was always dedicated to tabligh and uh, uh, service to the community as she belonged to Christian uh, Christian family so she was very uh, impressive in their tabligh in, in her tabligh and many people did the bath and many people were formed through her and she was always very kind and courteous to the people and Ghana and Nigeria and the journey to that after that uh, she was uh, known as Auntie uh, Salma Ghani with the name she was known and uh, she was a pious lady and a very popular lady and she will be remembered by all uh, the people in America Allah Almighty may exalt the status of uh, the departed soul, the lady, and all uh, 
the uh, the other people who have accepted ahmadiyat allah almighty give them steadfastness and uh, allah almighty bless the uh, american community that uh, that uh, these in the american community that they all listen to the message and accept that